With advancements happening in robotic surgery every day, new specialties are beginning to emerge. One such specialty is the area of head and neck surgery. With our newly expanded services, what we're offering is a true tertiary approach to head and neck surgical problems. These are both cancerous as well as non-cancerous. Can you tell me how uh, robotic surgery has changed what you do? Yeah, yeah robotic surgery uh, has been around for a while has not been available for head and neck surgeons to use um, up until the last six to nine months. Uh, and it is going to allow us to do um, uh, procedures in the mouth, in the throat, and in the voice box area uh, without having to make incisions on the neck or on the face and working through the mouth to get to these areas that really your hand and your wrist can't get to work. For doctors Mitchell and Bunn, the robotic surgery advantage will definitely give their patients a much easier road when it comes to recovery and appearance. The biggest benefit is getting better function because you're doing a less invasive procedure and hopefully we're going to be having better function because we're able to save more of the non-cancerous parts of the mouth and the throat and the tongue. The real benefit particularly with the transoral robotic treatment of, of throat and voice box region cancers is that we're able to access areas that previously were only only accessible through much larger surgeries that had long uh, hospital stays, typically pretty involved surgeries, oftentimes eight to ten hours in length. These, Because of the extent of these surgeries, they often required extensive reconstruction due to what was removed. Robotic surgery of the head and neck may also play a big role in helping to solve a problem suffered by many, sleep apnea. We're real excited about the prospects for the surgical treatment for obstructive sleep apnea compared to the methods that we have now. When patients are laying down flat, typically the tongue and throat tissues collapse against the airway and that's where the obstructive causes are for a number of patients. So while not all patients with obstructive sleep apneas will be good candidates for this type of procedure, what we are finding is that we're able to access areas to surgically treat the obstructin that's causing the underlying sleep apnea. So what does the future hold in the realm of head and neck surgery? Yeah, I think it's just an exciting uh, chance to um, bring new procedures in that are exciting because there's new technology but also exciting because uh, we should see some significant improvement in patient morbidity and uh, how they tolerate surgery, mm -hmm. how fast they're back to eating and talking and, and feel like they're back to their normal selves. And I think that will improve that dramatically.